Hey everyone, what's going on? It's your boy Krebsy Crypto, and for today's video, I'm just going to be doing a review on the Antminer Z9 Mini and just going over everything about the Antminer Z9 Mini and seeing if it's worth even getting for yourself and seeing if it's even like a profitable ASIC miner machine. So, right now, you're just seeing footage of mine, it's like my mining rig here running itself, the ASIC miner, the Bitman Antminer Z9 Mini. And currently it's running at 10 kilosoles, I believe, 10 to 11. So I don't have it overclocked. It's a nice compact small unit. So it's great for like a household, great for an apartment. Because as you see, compared to like the actual size of like my graphics cards and mining rigs, it pretty well takes up a lot less space than one of those. Because one of those requires a whole separate power supply and then all these extra cables to run. And it just looks like cluster, as you see in my video here. But with the Antminer Z9, it's just the Antminer itself. And then I believe it's just six PCI cables. And they run down to just a server power supply in the tote below there. Now I know some people might say it's not good to keep the power supply in a tote. But I keep air like airflow open on each side of it. So that way air can get in and get out of it. So that way it's not just sitting there and constantly being in its own heat and constantly recycling the same air. It has fresh air going in and it's also getting air pulled out of it. But yeah, on a noise level, it's you can reduce the fan. So there is a setting on the like uh, amp miner dashboard itself. Once you get the amp miner up and running, there will be like an IP address that you go to, and you'll be able to go to the dashboard and configure all these settings. So there's on this one at least there's an adjustable fan. So normally on default it runs at 100%, and I believe at 100% everything running full throttle, it's like 75 decibels. So it's a fairly loud machine, and if you had it running at full throttle, it's definitely going to leave some racket and give you probably a headache if it's in a small like area like myself just in an apartment so i have the fan actually cranked right down on mine i have it cranked down to 40 percent just being in canada and the cool air i have it right by a window the fan's nice and quiet the power supply is covered up but still has airflow so the sound is reduced a lot and you can also get these like little extensions for the amp miner and they're like stealth uh they're like stealth fans or something like that and you can attach it to the amp miner itself in my video here i just have a standard pc fan running and it just runs and pulls the air out of the back of it as you see there's an intake one and then an outtake so you can choose to have the fan i just put it there for purpose as you see in the second clip in the first one i choose just not to run it but i show you that you can just take any like pc fan and just set it on the back side of it and that will help reduce the heat in it so it can help you reduce the fan so that way you have a little bit less noise running from the amp miner itself but at least for myself, all in all, it's a great unit since I don't pay hydro. It's just a nice quiet machine. It's pretty much equivalent to having both of my GPU units running here. So it adds a little bit more noise, but nothing too substantial. And the heat, it doesn't add too much more heat, as I said, being wintertime. Now come summertime, I might need to find a different setup. But I'll take that on when obviously the time comes. So yeah, if you're just looking to get into ASIC miners and such, this is a good starting point just because of the compact size and the noise itself compared to the other big rigs that are the ASIC miners because there's a lot of different versions and most of them look pretty intimidating but this one's just a nice little household one like I said I just keep it running with the rest of my rigs and I barely even notice it but that's just for my scenario everyone's in a different like case when it comes to electricity costs setups things like that but now we'll head over to my computer here and we'll take a look at all like the stats, the dashboard, and see if it's really worth running in 2022, depending on your hydro rate and the cost of the unit itself, obviously. All right, everyone, now that we're on the desktop side of things, I just kind of wanted to show you the profits and like the pricing of things so you guys could go ahead and work it out yourselves to see if this is even profitable on your end. Because since it's an ASIC miner, it's a dedicated rig for mining. It's going to take a little bit more power consumption than your average computer or average graphics card. And since you want to keep it running as much as possible, obviously turning it off and on constantly is not the best for it. It's going to consume a little more power. It a, takes a bigger power supply, more or less like a server power supply. And just having three hash boards on there, even with this mini uh, Z9 Mini, it being like a mini one, I can tell you firsthand it still takes a little bit, of, like quite a bit of power. And like the fan noise and the producing of it is still quite loud for it being small, but you can always work with all that. And that has like a whole dashboard I'll show you here. So normally if you have an ASIC miner, once you do get it up and running and booted and once you know it is working, 
you'll find the IP address of it, and that will be through like a program that Bitman supplies, or you can just look on the uh, Ant Miner itself. Sometimes it has a sticker of the IP address. But once you're there, it's going to have like a dashboard here, and it's going to give you all the information of the ASIC miner, Ant Miner, whatever you want to call it. But what I wanted to show you guys is just kind of the miner stats of it. And as you see down here, like the memory available, I believe this is either storage or RAM. It keeps up to date on everything so you can keep track on it. But the main thing I want to focus on is the miner status here. So over on the mining stats page here is going to be where it displays all the mining information, obviously. So how long I've had it up and running this session, the kill of souls um, a second, I believe that's what it is. I'm not 100% sure. But it's going to show you the per second and on average your found blocks on what you're mining and all other information which I haven't honestly I haven't looked into. I just pay attention to like the main aspects. If things start like you know acting up and you have to go in and start like fixing it, that's when I kind of tend to look at more of these stats and see if everything is right. But as you see down below here, you're going to have three different mining pools you can use. Usually set them to different locations in case one goes down. I forgot to do that. I just kind of set them all to one Z pool mining pool here. But you're supposed to set them to different like uh, areas. And then the username is just a wallet. And then over here it's going to tell you like if it's alive, if you know, if it's dead pretty much. So that's pretty much if that hashboard is producing it, if there's any errors with it. It's going to tell you the status of it right there. And then the difference of the algorithm that you're on get works priority so the priority of each hashboard and then your accepted shares so this is one thing you want to keep your eye on obviously compare your accepted shares with your rejected over on the right hand side here but as you see i have 1359 accepted and three rejected and then you might be like what's this discarded at like 9000 those are just discarded shares so once the miner gets up and running like usually at first start you're going to have a lot of discarded because it's just getting connected it's just getting its pace made so it's just going to disregard those shares. It's not going to accept them or reject them because rejected ones actually affect your hash rate and payout a little bit where it discarded that doesn't even come up to the pool itself. It's just set aside and it's forgotten about. But all this information here is information that you could take from this video and plug into mining profitability calculators if you want. Or like I said, I'm going to be doing it in this video here, just going over it. So like I've said, I'm not a huge fan of like miner stat and like mining um, profitability websites because things are always changing and it's a hard market to actually like predict itself but this is going to give you a rough estimate on your profits and how much like electricity cost is going to come from running the actual ant miner itself so once you're on the web page here you're going to have a few options at the top a few different boxes you can go ahead and mess with if you want the hash rate i suggest not unless you like absolutely know it for the Antminer Z9, it's going to be anywhere from 10 to 15 kilohash, depending if you overclock it or use some modified firmware or things like that. I just have mine as stock firmware, so as you see, 10.95, and on average, it's 11.06. So nothing too crazy, but like I said, this is kind of like a introduction into ASIC mining. Uh, Antminer Z9 Mini is a very good introduction household miner. I'm in an apartment myself, and I've had no complaints, no issues with it running. Mind you, I have the fan only running at 40%. You can run it at 100%, but I can tell you right now that's pretty loud. And I believe that's like 70-something decibels for sound. So right there, it's going to be irritating and most likely give you a headache right off the bat. So if you can, try to set up like a nice airflow system for it. Like mine's right by a window and I can have the fan right down to 40%. So anyways, back to the minor stat page here. I'm just going to leave it at 10 kilohash. I know I could technically put 11, but just a good round number just at 10. The power consumption, you just want to leave that because that's 300 watts. That's the basic power consumption for ant miner z9 minis and that's running at like 100 percent i believe with all three hash boards so i could be running a little less wattage since i have less fan power running and then your currency obviously whatever uh, currency you're in so for me i'm in canada so canadian currency and then if you're american you can set the usd one and then your electricity costs so this is going to be in like cent or dollar form so this is going to tell you like your difference in profit and everything like that so for example right now if your electricity cost is over 10 cents it's gonna actually hurt you to run this mining rig because you're gonna be losing like 20 or yeah you're gonna be down negative 20 cents 
because it costs you 72 cents to run it and you're only making 52 cents. So therefore your profit's negative 20 cents. But like I said, I don't pay hydro. So for my case, I would put like 0.0, .0 because my hydro cost is nothing. And then you can do whatever calculation you want. You can do current, three hour average, six hour, 12 hour, one day. We'll just go with current. You can show the top 20 results or all coins. I recommend just doing the top 20 because that's gonna be obviously your most profitable. Then once that's done, you click calculate and that will bring up your most profitable one right at the top here. And then as it goes down, obviously profits get less. So as you see here, Nano Pool Zek, you're gonna see Zek a lot because that's gonna be your main coin, which is Z coin. I believe it's called or Zcash or something like that. And that's gonna be the main algorithm, which is Equihash for this ant miner here. And then if you come over to the estimated daily, it's 55 cents and then the cost is nothing because I don't pay for hydro. And then my profit's 55 cents and that would be on nano pool. You could go down and see like two miners here has 40 cents. And then there's a few others like ant pool, uh, Zerg pool, and even like Z pool. You could do Zek, so uh, Z cash as I was saying. There's a few different ones and profits are always changing. But we could do for an example, let's say your hydro rate was $0.05 cents a kilowatt. Um, I'm not sure on hydro rate cost, because like I said, mine's all inclusive in my apartment. So I don't have to really worry about that. I just pay one fee and that covers everything. And that doesn't fluctuate no matter how much I'm using. So I have it pretty lucky. But let's just say it's $0.05. Cents. I know some areas pay like 6 to $0.10. Cents. You're still kind of cutting it close, so your estimated profit would be... Uh, 19 cents and that's at a 55 cent cost and 36 cent hydro cost and then your estimated daily is 19 and as it goes down it gets less but like I said if you were to like overclock it let's say and I believe when you overclock it you're not using less you're not using more power you're actually using less so you could figure that out as well there's a few diff different scenarios you could go about but let's calculate at like 15 uh, kilohash if you were able to overclock it because there's a lot of information online for that and that electricity cost is five cents you're now making 46 cents because your daily is 82 so you could mess around and let's say seven cents let's see how far we could push it and then that would be 32 cents profit and then that would be 82 cents daily but then if we went back down to 10 kilohash if you didn't overclock you'd be rocking only about five cents a day so you most likely, if you're in a scenario where your hydro rates are like higher end, you're most likely going to want to stick away from the Z9 Mini, in my opinion. But if you know how to overclock it and you're confident on it, you're going to run it all the time and you're sure you're going to make sure you're always keeping up on the best pool for making profits, then I don't see an issue with it. But I'm not going to say to recommend it if you have higher hydro rates. Anything really under like that six cent range, I know I don't, like I said, I'm not too keen on hydro rates myself. I have never really had to pay them but if you're in the lucky ballpark and you don't have to have and you don't have to pay them or they're like pretty cheap then a z9 mini is good for a household or an apartment in my opinion you could also factor in a few other things so if like say you have higher hydro rates you could go ahead and just like for the winter time run a few of these a6 z9 minis and then you could use them to produce the heat for your house because they do produce a lot of heat but if you get like, you know, let's say like five of them and put them around your house or put them in one area to produce that kind of heat for your home, you're saving money on heating, which could go to benefit the mining. So there's a lot of different scenarios that could come into play. Now, most of the time, you guys are probably wondering the cost of like a Z9 Mini on where to buy them. Most of the time, you can find them just on eBay or like a local marketplace, most likely. I found mine on eBay and I got mine for around the $100 mark and at the time they were making around like 60 to 80 cents so roughly about the same now but obviously about like a 5 cent difference nothing huge but it all depends on the value of like Zcash or uh, Zcoin whatever you want to call it. Um, the value on that also reflects on the value of the ASIC because if that coin goes up, then the miner itself becomes more profitable because the algorithm then becomes profitable. But right now, since on average, these things are not profitable to like the average person, if you're paying like 10 cents a kilowatt or something, they are going for a little cheaper on eBay. So on eBay, I've seen them range from $50 to 
to a hundred dollars, even a little more. It all depends on the seller and like what the scenario they're in as well. But if you could get it for around fifty to eighty dollars, I'd say that's a pretty good pickup. I overpaid a little bit on mine. I I even know because I had a hundred dollar fee on it plus you have shipping. So I think it came to like one thirty or one forty. So it's gonna be a bit till I paid it off, but that's all right because this was kind of my introduction into ant miners and like the ant miner Z9 itself. But in my case, I was kind of lucky with overpaying because since my hydro rates, you know, are kind of worked into my rent fee here. I can kind of just run it all the time and slowly make my money back. Even though it'll still take quite a bit of time, it's still like worth it for me because like I said, technically I'm running it for free, so I'm not paying anything at all. And everything I'm making is profit, so I can just hold it, hold it until like I've made enough to pay myself back on it. But like I said, I'd say in general, this is not like a recommended miner unless you can get it for a really good deal, like depending on your like your scenario for hydro rates and the cost of the actual unit itself. If you can run multiple of them, you might be lucky and get away with it because like I have, I think it's a 1600 watt power supply. It was at the start of the video there and that thing can run like two of these if I wanted. So one power supply running two of them is better than like two separate power supplies. So and if you decide to go ahead and overclock it, it's going to take down the wattage, I believe, because even with overclocking with GPUs and such, I've seen it's knocked down the wattage on some, depending on how it's overclocked. But yeah, it's all pretty much going to be it for this video. I just wanted to quickly go over the stats of the Antminer Z9 Mini, just so I could tell you guys about it. And like, since I personally own it, I could tell you firsthand experiences and tell you if it's worth it or not. And like I just did to the average person on your hydro rate, if you have higher rates, it's not worth it. Like we just went over anything over like that six, seven cent range, you're barely cutting even unless you're overclocking, then it's like a lucky ballpark. But you know, I hope this video helps you guys with some information on ASIC miners and amp miners in general. If it did, make sure to drop a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button as I'll kind of do these type of videos for like graphics cards too, if these things kind of pique your interest. But I hope you all have an amazing day, and this is Krebsy Crypto, signing out.